Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Jesus Christ. I like the ocean. My next mod for this is gonna be a winch. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode and welcome to the freeway in the middle of nowhere. We are heading on another adventure. I have the sea dudes behind me. And today I wanna to show you something that I've been working on for probably the last six months or so. Ever since the Explorer came out, I have been looking for ways to make it even better. It all started out with the custom anchor setup that I built that stopped me from having to go in the water to attach the anchor onto that front D-ring uh, so that I could anchor the ski. Then after that, I installed the bilge pump and the second battery. And then after that, I added in my nav lights, I added in my running lights, and I added in the spotlights, which absolutely transformed the way that the ski looks and also its functionality. But right when I saw the Explorer Pro first announced, I looked at those front grab rails and I couldn't help but feel like they weren't being utilized to their full potential. And that's when I came up with the thought of what if I could make an additional storage area that bridged the nose of the sea -Doo, that not only gave me that extra space to carry gear, but would also help to balance out the ski. Because right now, when I have the thing loaded up for camping trips, there is a lot of weight on the back. But then I realized that my skills as a designer were definitely very, very limited. And although I have all the ideas up here, I'm not very good at getting them out on paper. So I employed the help of Starch Creative which is an amazing creative agency based in New York, Seattle, and Newport Beach, California. And luckily, I happen to be very good friends with Brandon, who is the owner of the company. I went to him with my idea, and he said he had exactly the guy to work on the project for me. His name's Brian, and he is an industrial engineer. And in a previous role, he had actually worked with another PwC company, who shall remain nameless, in designing some of their products. So the first thing I had to do was take the ski to the fab school. And what we did there was 3D scan the entire front of the unit. And that gave us a very, very clear picture with all the dimensions that we could then start to build up our sketches and 3D models on. Once we had that, I took it back to Brian and he said, to work coming up with different ideas for the solution to the problem that up to this point was just in my head. A couple of weeks later, he called me into the office and we went through the designs that he had come up with. They were all honestly amazing with different ideas of how to attach things and the way that the plate would mount. And it was unbelievable to see a true professional at work. So once I'd signed off on the final design, it was time to take things to prototyping. And this is where Purpose Supply came on board. If Starch Creative are the thinkers, Purpose are the doers, and they happen to be their sister company, which was perfect because it meant the whole process was super seamless as we handed off the project from design over to production. I work closely with Ben, who is one of the master fabricators over at Purpose, and that guy is a genius. If it can be cut, bent, or welded, that man will do it and he will get it millimeter perfect. So we spent about a week finessing the final design of the rack, making minuscule changes to get it absolutely perfect. Now bear in mind, I've never created a product like this before. This literally was something that didn't exist other than in my head. And using people at the absolute top of their game, I have been able to take something from concept to reality. And when I saw that thing mounted to the ski for the first time, I was blown away. It was even better than I could have imagined. And that is where we're gonna pick up right now. So we are on our way to Purpose Supply Co, who are the guys that have been making this rack for me that I've been prototyping with. And the last time I saw it, it looked amazing, but it was all raw metal. Today is the day that I get to see it installed all finished and powder coated, looking super nice. So they haven't even sent me pictures of it since it came back from powder coat. So I'm very excited to see what it looks like on the ski. All the spins today. All right, let's see this thing. What's up, dude? What's up, bud? How you doing? Good, how you doing? This is Sean, everybody, from Purpose. Oh my goodness. Dude, that looks so good. It's finally ready, and it's here. You ready? Boom. There you 
go guys. This is the new Swords front rack. We have got even more luggage space. So obviously we've got all of the link accessories on the back and we've got the space under here. But like I always say, if some is good, more is better. And this is definitely better. That looks so good. Oh my, you guys kill it. That was amazing. What I wanted was something that didn't ruin the design of the Explorer. The Explorer's already such a wild looking ski. And so I didn't want something that was gonna like detract from that. It looks factory. Like if CD rolled out with this, other than the fact that yes, it's got my logo on it. So Brian over at Starch did an amazing job with the design here. So it fits with the lines. Obviously we've got this nice triangular nose. So stock ski, bone stock, mine. I actually think it makes the thing look better. Oh, and I know you guys are gonna ask, can you still open the front? Well, let me show you. How is that for some tolerance? When I say these guys nailed it with the design and the production, they nailed it. I mean, look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. And uh, yes, the lights still do work. Turn on big yellow. There we go. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. So you can still see the running lights underneath, obviously my nav lights, and then Big yeller up there. Right now I weigh about 220 pounds. So if you're wondering how strong it is, we're good. So I guess this transition is gonna be from here in the workshop to out there on the river. And we're back. Here is the rack looking absolutely epic. Might have added a little neon yellow accent right here. It's just rough, so don't look too close. But I just wanted to see how it looked with the logo in the neon yellow. And uh, like I said, we're back at the river, not just any stretch of river. Do you remember a few weeks ago when I tried to ride all the way from Yuma, basically Mexico, up to Blythe and I got to uh, a bridge and I said I didn't feel safe and I did a YouTube short on it and it blew up and everybody said that I'm a complete pussy and why am I scared and blah, blah, blah. Well, I knew that if I didn't go back and finish that ride, there was about six miles left of the river, I would kick myself and my OCD would be going wild because every time I told someone that I was riding as much of the Colorado River as I possibly could, that little section would always bother me. We are north of the area that I found myself at last time. So what we're gonna do is put in right here, we're gonna head all the way up to the dam that I was aiming for, and then we're gonna come back down, go down to the bridge, go and say our farewells because I will never ever go back there again. This is day one of a five day trip here to the river and I am so pumped. If I told you that this came stock on the Explorer, I think you would believe me because it just fits perfectly. The angles, everything about it is just spot on. I could not be happier and this gives me so much flexibility to mount more stuff up here. Like I said, I could put a life raft up here, I can put an extra dry bag up here, I could probably add on some link attachments up here, but uh, we're testing it right now. We're just trying to figure out exactly what the use of this thing is and whether or not this thing is gonna stand the test of time. My honest thought, oh yeah it is. And I think you guys are gonna want one too. All right, launched. Let's go park the truck, get on our way. That right there, that is the area where I ended up bailing from the mission. And, uh, and so right now we are just there. So we have, we're basically halfway between the dam and the town. Let's go down river that way. We'll go to the town first, get that done and then we'll cruise up and we'll go all the way up to the dam. Only 80 degrees, but it feels a lot warmer than that to me. So the other nice thing, I got my depth finder fixed, which means that I have accurate uh, bottom reporting. So yeah, that was uh, the other problem last time I was on this trip is uh, my fish finder, my depth finder was on the squiff, uh, but I've actually fixed it. And it's quite a common problem with the fish finders and the depth finders on these sea -dos. Because they get banged around so much, they do tend to start leaking the coolant, the fluid that's inside of them. And nobody seems to be able to find a fix. 
guess he's found a fix. I'm testing it right now, so it may not be a fix, but so far so good. And so when that is proven, when I've got six months of no issues, then I will also be releasing that. So look at me, I'm just like a Sea-Doo inventor. Love it, immediately, two feet deep, beautiful. <laughs> this river. <laughs> It's so shallow, it's so shallow, yeah, oh, scrape, 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 we were close, all right, trying to get out of us. look how fast it's flowing though, never a dull moment on this piece of river, that's for sure, now I think if I had committed and just gone full ponies, we probably would have made it, through. wait, is that a mud bank over there? <laughs> you can't even get out. <laughs> oh my god, I give up. I give up. <laughs> oh, it's getting deep. Come back, come back. Yeah, come back. And run. And run. Yeah, I know, it's shallow. Can you see this big cloud here? Well, I just came across that section and it went from three and a half feet to half a foot. And I literally skated along and then I was like, nah, -uh, it's getting too shallow. So I hit the kill switch and I basically skimmed off this bit and then boom, dropped down into the water. I mean, it's horrific. Why do I do this to myself? I'm sorry, bud. I promise we'll go somewhere deep soon. For God's sake! Uh, yeah, who, who knows? Who knows? We just... Just shut up, Swordsy, and deal with it. That's all you can do. Look, it goes deep there. Okay, we're gonna change this alarm. Depth is gonna be... One foot. Done. Alright, good. So we're deep here. Six, seven feet. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Jesus Christ. So I was coming through here, try to get to there, and then... And I swear to God, this is not for dramatic effect. I am not trying to beach this ski, trust me. I want nothing more than to get down this river and get the F out of here because Oh, it's miserable. Hey, you should make a thumbnail and get people to complain and say that I'm being clickbaity. There you go. It's not actually a lie, this is pretty good. Pretty beached. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I can't actually get it off. I like the ocean. My next mod for this is going to be a winch. Don't go over landing on a sea dew. No fun. And we're off. So in the last video when I had the incident down by the bridge, I was worried about continuing because I was losing light and I didn't know if I was going to find somewhere to camp. And <laughs> Then I come across this absolutely perfect beach here, which is probably only about another two miles upstream from where I was, but I, I just didn't know. I'd flown around on Google Maps, but the thing is, what I've realized with these rivers is sometimes you'll see a beach on Google Maps, but when you actually get to it, the water levels come up and there's no beach left. So like the beach that I camped on when I did the Hoover Dam, that doesn't show up on Google Maps. You won't find that by flying around, but when I was there, it was absolutely perfect. So you just never know, but that 100% would have been a lovely place to camp. So this is it. 
the very spot where my last trip came to an end. Ooh, so in hindsight, obviously hindsight's 2020, um, there are some camping sites up there closer than the one that I had to ride to, which was about 10 miles, 15 miles back down river. However, today especially, the river up there is so much more treacherous than the 65 miles of river that I rode to actually get here. So I still think I did the right thing. Obviously I had no idea. That could have been absolutely awful and there'd be nowhere for me to camp. And then I definitely would have gotten stuck and it would have been in the dark and it would have been awful. At least that way I knew where I'd come from. So I knew which side of the river to ride to not get stuck, etc., etc. But we did it. So now I have linked the little trail on my GPS from the bottom of the Colorado River right next to Mexico all the way up to this very point and now all we have to do is retrace our steps back along that shitty bit of river get up to the dam and then we're good we have crossed this cursed piece of river off the list i'll be so pleased so yeah i'm happy with that i'm gonna consider that joined which means now look at that that's where i came from <laughs> so now we have to go back up this way and join that line all right go on then let's see if this beach would have been a suitable place to camp now obviously people have been here because there is trash which sucks this is the thing when you rely on google maps for scouting locations is you truly don't know yeah, this looks like it probably would have worked. So there's obviously an access road that brings you down here. Now, who knows if people would have come down during the night, but yeah, okay. All right, fine, fine. I could have kept going. I could have kept forging the path, the lesser sea dude, but I didn't because I like to be safe. The Cursed River. And now I'm in the kelp forest. <laughs> what a f***ing joke. Alright, so she ate some salad, so let's uh, run the IDF and uh, see if we can't clear it. Get rid of the salad! <laughs> Look at it. That's what was in there. The irony that I still might not be able to finish this part of the river because the sun is definitely going down. Um... <laughs> I, it, if I can't, if I cannot make it all the way up to the dam and back again this time around, I'm just going to say that this part of the river has beaten me. So I didn't film it, but I just ended up going through this no wake zone thinking it was the no wake zone that I was in earlier. And in fact, wasn't. And there is no way to get out the other end because it's so shallow. So uh, we have to come all the way back and then go all the way around on the outside. Oh well, at least see you got to eat. So this is it, the final stretch of the river. God knows what we're gonna find. Uh, running over salad again. Ladies and gentlemen, is the Palo Verde Dam. We've done it. We made it. Oh man, this was a brutal section of river, but we did it. It's right there. Check that one off the bucket list. Go to the nav. Let's see. Look at my charts. There we go. All the way up, all the way from there. Yes. That's it, that's all I wanted. My OCD brain just wanted to see that little blue squiggly line go all the way from that sandbank where I stopped to the dam. And we've done it. Yes. I need a beer.
Cheers, guys. Thank you for uh, joining me on today's adventure. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you like the uh, little rack that I made. We will be putting it through its paces over the next few weeks. And this week in particular, I have five days of river riding planned ahead of me. So stay tuned for all of that content. The river is literally just behind me. And I don't want to kind of sound like a negative Nancy, but I just went down to check out the water level and it is so low that I don't think I could even launch the ski right now. So I'll figure that out in the morning, see what I'm going to do, because my plan was to do a camping episode on the lower part of the Colorado right here in Parker, Arizona. But if I can't get it in the water, then I'm going to have to figure something else out. Anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys next week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like, share, do all the things, let your friends know about it. Follow me on Instagram. And most importantly, remember, until next time, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya.